Hello my friends and welcome back to my Hardcore Iron Man Progress series. It has been a while since I posted one of these videos. Obviously I've been playing the Twisted League I think now uh, for over a month. If you want to see my full Twisted League commentary playlist uh, I will have that linked below. But as for now we're on episode 47. As ever we are working towards some of those big objectives. We still have the Ranger Boots left to obtain and uh, doing some raids in between. So to start things off I'm actually going to be doing something slightly different. By the way the next clips you guys are going to see is kind of like a hardcore Iron Man clip dump of uh, all the things I kind of did on the hardcore during the Twisted League which uh, admittedly it wasn't too much but uh, some cool stuff did happen. We're about nine days deep into the Twisted League right now I'm having a lot of fun. Truth be told, I haven't really played the hardcore much apart from like doing dailies, weeklies or what have you. Uh, but we will be achieving right now level 81 runecrafting. We've been doing a fair bit of natures just before the league started. So good bit of a boost right here for boosting for the elite diaries. There's 81. Very nice. By the way, thanks to Twisted League, I've discovered that the Blast Mine actually below 85 mining does offer Runite Ore. This could be a good solution to my future problems of uh, not being able to get more for Rune Darts. Not that that's a problem just yet, but it's good to get ahead. Anyway, that was uh, three days worth of dailies, as I can get 80 free dynamite from the guy just uh, south of here. Very nice mining XP as well. So I'll be doing this maybe every other day in the league just uh, to top up my rune supply. There's 28 to start with. Very nice. So Twisted League has got me doing some things on my hardcore that I wouldn't usually do. And something weird happened. I actually ended up getting a golden tench uh, while aiming to get 150 mulch pearls. Uh, again, it happened on mobile, so I didn't quite have the opportunity to record it straight away. Uh, but that being said, it was unexpected. And I'm going to trade it in because... I don't really care about it as a cosmetic right now and uh, it's going to be 100 pearls which is going to bypass a lot of the process. I do want to unlock this pearl fishing rod for anglerfish so let's trade it in. Uh, it's going to be 100 pearls and should be quite easy. Okay let's exchange the golden tench and that should be knocked off our collection log as well now for the account so very solid. I only need uh, five more pearls now to unlock the rods, so that shouldn't take too long on mobile, very quick. Turns out I was mistaken, the pearl fishing rod is actually only 100 mulch pearls, so you can straight away pick that up. And uh, potentially we might get a barbarian rod as well, because uh, 91 to 99 fishing, I'd like to do at least some of it with a barbarian rod, but that's another 100 points, so... If I get another tench, dude, that'll be insane, but we'll AFK this place a little more. By the way, why is it worth to pick up this rod? Is because it saves you one inventory space when uh, doing regular fishing, so very efficient for if you're doing a large amount of anglerfish, which I suppose I'll be doing at some point as well, so worthwhile to do. Uh, we'll return for some more pearls later. We have AFK'd some more in the blast mine during the Twisted League. It is time now to claim a level. I think this will be level 83 when we collect these. Let's see here. Nice. 13k XP. That means we have just achieved level 83. Two mining levels left until we can officially mine runite ore. And we've uh, been keeping up our resources of the rune ore as well, which is very nice indeed. Hello again. This is now the day after I have fully quit the Twisted Leagues. Bit of an unfortunate ending, but let's not talk about that. Um, I do want to take a bit of a break from Slayer because I'm coming off the back of like a five or six day just repetitive Slayer grind on the league. So I figured, you know what? You know what? My pets are feeling quite lonely. I want to come down here to the swamps and catch myself a handsome chompy chick. It's a one in 500 drop rate um, from chompies once you've completed the Western Elite Diary. So I think this shouldn't take too long. I'm currently on approximately 1,000 chompy, uh, chompy birds killed. So... Um, this should be quick process. I will of course let you know how many it took. Nice, there he is, the handsome fella has been obtained, the chompy chick pet. You have a funny feeling like you're being followed? Damn straight. Let's take a look at the kill count. I don't think we've uh, surpassed 200, so quite a bit under the drop rate. Altogether I did pluck every bird, so it took roughly about 300 overall uh, if you count that as well but he's so handsome dude there's pet number five of the account and this guy is actually quite good for a number of reasons because he does save the bank space of the composite ogre bow the ogre arrows and the bellows so overall i'm gonna have two less bank spaces and a new pet very nice let's go insure him and we'll do some other stuff as ever let's insure the chompy chick with probita for 500k um there's not a lot of good uses for our money anyway these days and we can reclaim it should we lose our hardcore status. That looks quite clean. We now have five pets of the account. Um, I'm not sure how many are in the game right now. I think, isn't, isn't it like 45, maybe 46? 
There'll be more dropping of Ashihama as well soon, but yeah, Chompy Chick is pretty nice. It saved us some bank space and looks very cute. Now that we've hunted down the Chompy Chick, it is time to head down here to Thai Farm and get the last useful unlock, which is the Gricola's can. Uh, will give us unlimited water charges in one can instead of having a few that are like eight doses and then having to make sure each one is fully stocked so I don't have any more bank space taken up. So it's going to be a lot more efficient to have one of these. I can get rid of all of these. Um, that's going to be eight games of Thai Farm, which should also award us between 250 and like 300k um, farming XP which is quite nice and get a few free ranks you know why not um, shouldn't take too long it'll give us a nice break from Slayer going back from Twisted League so almost forgot about these but I uh, had some completed clue caskets mostly from birdhouse runs I believe all throughout the Twisted League we do have two easy two medium and one elite so let's open them up see if we can get any uniques trash there for the first two let's see if the medium has anything of note Armadale page uh, second one, not too good. And on to the Elite. Can we get any uniques? Oh, the giant boot. Nice. Oh, that is beautiful. <laughs> that is one of the best cosmetics in the game. I'm happy with that. A medium clue has been completed. I believe we got this casket from a birdhouse run. Uh, I'm not exactly sure approximately what my medium clue count is, but I know it's fast approaching 500. So let's see what we get from this casket, shall we? Ooh, Green Dee Hut Chaps T. Uh, now I'm not sure if this is the duplicate or the body is. All right, let's take a look if it was a unique. Nice, we have just finished up our trimmed uh, dragon hide set. That's very cool. I like it. Let's take a look how it looks. Not too bad, dude, not too bad. I wish I was like 40 range again so I can wear this. Um, but we can now store that away in the POH, so we have saved ourselves an additional bank space. That took a very long time, but here is the last deposit of the fruit needed for the unlimited watering can. Let's deposit them. It's another 350k farming XP or so. My current aim is to get to like 40 mil XP, um, and that'll bring me up to the front page and like rank 20. But more importantly, let's quickly grab the watering can for 200. There it is, the final useful unlock. Uh, recharging the can is, uh, oh, zero points, that's really good. It's actually read that it is unlimited, but it has charges, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, let's quickly grab the can. Uh, do we get it? Yeah, it looks quite cool. Uh, 100%, nice. I wonder how much one watering costs, but yeah. It's another collection log item unlocked, and the final useful one from Thai Farm, not counting the Zami grapes, which, quite honestly, I'm not going to get them, because um, I'm going to be doing Cow Fight Queen for the most part now for my Zami wines. So it's looking quite good. If you ever needed another reason to do your birdhouse runs, take this one. This is the second elite casket of the episode that's been obtained from birdhouse runs. Let's see what's inside this casket. Can we get any uniques? Summer pies, that's not too bad because uh, we're doing some RD agility at the moment. We're almost uh, to level 89, but we need all the boosts we can get. So this is a pretty decent elite clue. 39th one completed. Now I feel like we should begin the hunt for the ranger boots once again this episode. If you missed what I did last time, I came up with a bit of an alternative method uh, to gather medium clues since I was growing so tired of Puro Puro. Um, so that's what I'll be continuing today. So basically I get one slayer task, once that's completed I go and cannon some Falador guards for one medium clue scroll. So I'd like to go all the way to 95 slayer, doing that method all the while. Uh, so I got quite a few cannonballs during Twisted League. Anyways, I'll be using Duradel for the most part. Let's see what assignment number one is. 146 Dagonoff. That is beautiful. I'm going to do the entire task over in the DKs. For no particular reason, we've completed all the uniques now. I just really enjoy doing DKs, so let's see if we can get any uniques this trip. Finishing the task on the trusty Dagonoff Rex. Unfortunately, no uniques this time. However, I do really enjoy these uh, Dagonoff King sessions. We'll be back once we get the Elite Diary as well. Once we can start banking prayer. Oh man, this task is going to be even better. Anyway, let's uh, go and attempt this hard clue. Maybe we can get it done. And uh, let's continue the Slayer. Oh, almost forgot. I'm going to get the medium clue before getting the next task. Let's go. By the way, something uh, kind of cool that released not too long ago was boss high scores on the website. And I was just perusing it when it came out. I'm not sure if this is still current, but it was ranked 2 Dagonoff Rex uh, on the week of release. Let's see if that's still the case. I am indeed. Look at that. 736 kills. Got some guys not too far away from me. But I'm quite far behind the uh, rank 1 guy. But yeah, I'm going to aim to maybe get rank 1 for Rex at some point. It's not too many kills. We're looking at maybe five to six Dagonoff tasks overall. That's pretty cool. There we have a couple of caskets. The first medium clue of the Slayer grind and a hard clue. Let's do them back to front. See if there's anything useful inside this time. Uh, what are those teleports? Nada. Not especially good. On to the medium. 
Wow, that is very underwhelming. I guess I won't include clues like this from uh, here on out, so you'll see the clue numbers on the right hand side between Slayer tasks. Let's grab a second task. I think I will prioritize anything right now that can give seeds, such as uh, Kurosks or Aberrant Spectres. Running a bit low at the moment, let's see what we get. Perfect. That is a lot of seeds right there, hopefully a few Raynors as well. Time for medium clue scroll number three. Can we get the Rangers? No, <laughs> dude. Oh, the climbing boots, G. It had to happen at some point. At least they're unique, so you can't complain all too much. We've only done three clue scrolls, already a pair of boots that we didn't need or want. But, you know, if I ever start a new account, these kind of would look marginally better uh, for an Iron Man going until 80 Slayer, but yeah. I guess we'll slap these into the costume room uh, treasure chest for now, and that's one more item off the collection log. I just peeked at the collection log by the way, and it just so happens that I've now completed every other pair of boots apart from the Rangers, which to be honest isn't that surprising if you've uh, seen some other hardcores out there that have grinded this. It's usually the Rangers that you get last of all. The item you need is the item you get last, but yeah. Now that um, all these have been completed, I don't need to worry about going back to mediums and getting these in the future, which is quite good. And 83 out of 115 on the collection log as well. About to get an attack level out here. The first one in quite a while, this one will be 95 attack. That means after that, there's only four levels left to go and then we'll have max melees. I'm doing some Konar Slayer for now. Um, I'm gonna try and assemble like nine or 10 brimstone keys and then uh, collect the loot. Hopefully it's quite good. We've got not one, but two caskets to open this time. We had one from the Dagonoffs on the task and one from the cannoning after. We don't do no half measures on this account. Let's open them up. See, we, what is this? Saradom in page four. All right, next clue, 495. White elegant blouse. I think that is a unique. I think I had like 83 on the collection log last time. Let's quickly go check. Moment of truth. Let's see if we have now 84 slots filled. Nice. That was a unique. I'll take it. Time for the third elite clue scroll completed of the episode. Once again, I've obtained this one from skilling. So I believe this one was from blast mining. I'm still doing that a little bit to get my rune supplies up there. Let's see what's inside this time, baby. Ooh, an Arceus Scarf. Nice, that is in fact a unique. Some Morton Teleports, overall not a bad clue. We have got a bit of an important milestone coming up. Another medium clue, but more importantly, this is medium clue number 500. So we stand here in the, in the light of Saradomin's Grace. Hopefully it doesn't take another 500 to get the boots. Ooh, an Armadillo Stole. That's not a bad item to get on the... Uh, Clue number 500. I believe I do already have this, but uh, yeah, here's to another, hopefully less than 500 mediums. Medium clue casket, show me what you got. Mithril trimmed helm, that is not unique, I think. Actually, would you look at that? I've just completed my full Mithril trim set. That's very cool. That's actually freed up another two bank spaces. Very happy with this. I can put this in my POH as another one to go from the collection log. Very nice. We've got clue casket number 15 of the mediums next to the fella Brambickle. Regardless of what happens here, we are now going to return to Duradel Slayer because uh, we've gathered more than 10 brimstone keys. 30% of the way progressed, I think, to uh, level 95, by the way. Can we see Ranger Boots? Unfortunately not. That is a shitty clue. But yeah, back to Duradel now. We'll uh, continue doing these clue hunting method throughout the rest of the way to 95. Before we get back to it, let's open up these 13 brimstone chests. Hopefully we can get some good loot. I think the best thing I can hope for right now would be any uniques from the Mystic Dusk set or any Redwood Seeds. That would also be quite nice. Let's open these 13, see what we get. Bit more of a disappointing reward this time. We ended up getting freaking swordfish, which I had no clue about that they were even on this drop table. Let's quickly put everything in the price check. 1.5 mil, which is overall not too bad, but it could have been a lot better. We did get some dragon dart tips, some torstal seeds, so overall can't complain. Uh, anyways, back to Duradel now. Hopefully we can't get restricted now, so any boss tasks will automatically be completed. Back to Duradel now. I reckon the best task we can get right now would be Abyssal Demons. I still need a crush weapon, and I've got a juicy 150 uh, Abyssal Demon task on the Iron Man, ready to learn Sire. So that'll be the best thing I can get right now. Oh my god, and we got it. That is so good. I can't believe I just freaking talked about it and it just happened, you know? It's, that's what you gotta do in RuneScape, you know? You gotta complain, and then you get the task. 177 Abyssal Demons, we get some chances at the bludgeon pieces. Of course, I'm gonna learn some of the mechanics, because that boss can be brutal. It can wipe you out pretty quick if you don't know what you're doing. So I'm gonna do that right now on the Iron Man, and do a few hundred kills. 
Let's see how it goes. Hopefully I'll get some drops on this account, dude. That'll be so good. The first ever Abyssal Sire is coming in. Alright, we've uh, made it here to the big fella. Abyssal Sire, we've done about 15 kills currently on my Iron Man, uh, which isn't too many, but I've only got a Crystal Bow there, and the respiratory systems like take ages to take down, but uh, yeah, higher mage level, higher stats, and better gear on this account, so I'm feeling pretty good. As long as I don't disconnect, I think I should be fine. 177 Abyssal Sires, let's do it. Alright, I take back what I said. After 11 kills, it's definitely scary to do the mechanics for, uh, for Phase 3. But, that being said, I do really need a crush weapon, so I guess that just kind of makes it more spicy, the prospect of me perhaps losing the hardcore, but... I don't know, man. I feel like I can control it most times. It's just if you really get unlucky and you don't see the vent popping up underneath you and the scions get a few hits, then it starts to get a bit scary, but we'll carry on for now. It's uh, pretty chill. It's a good boss. I like it. Yes, dude! On side coming in. 30 kill count. Oh, that's so beautiful, dude. Ooh, one out of 100 per each of these unsides. I am all too happy, dude. I was wondering which of these bosses was going to be the one that breaks the luck streak, but it isn't going to be this one. Well, we still have to put it into the font of consumption, and uh, there's a lot of items on that drop table, so I'm cheekily hoping we can get one of the bludgeons. That'll be so good. Let's go and uh, consume this thing. All right, this is it. Regardless of what happens, I cannot complain. Within 30 kill count, we got the unside. <sighs> please, Jagex. Please. Please. <laughs> Oh, oh my days, I just got the pet. No way. No way. <laughs> oh my days, yes, let's go. That's such a good thing to get as the first drop. Oh my god. I cannot believe it. we just got the Abyssal Orphan. <laughs> you killed my father. Oh man, let's go. I think, like, legitimately, this might be the lowest chance from the font of consumption as well. Oh, he's so big, dude. He's almost like twice the size of my goddamn player character if he got on all his four legs. That's so amazing. I legit can't believe we just got the pet. Let's quickly go and ensure it, dude. Within 30 kills of the Abyssal Sire task, we get the Abyssal Orphan. That's so freaking good. Oh, he's so handsome, dude. You guys know the drill. We're here in the insurance lady. Let's pay another 500k. Should our status get lost, we retain the pet. That is beautiful, dude. I can't believe that. Two pets within the course of one episode. That brings us up to six, by the way. Let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the bank tab. It is going to be looking very, very handsome with this uh, big boy. Dude. The Abyssal Orphan is such an unexpected thing to get as like the first on side, like legit. I was expecting like either a whip or a dagger or something. Surely not this, but yeah, the pets tab is looking very, very on point. I'm glad to be getting a few more combat pets as well. Another really good thing about the Sire boss is how much Runite ore it drops. I've just had two drops, I think, back to back. Let me quickly check on the drops we've had so far. 30 in, well, 69 size because I did a few practice kills on my Iron Man, but that's definitely quite a few rune darts for the future, so quite good supplies, I'll take it. With today's update, we have now seen the closure of the Twisted League Worlds and the arrival of this uh, Twisted League tutor on the mainland where you can claim your rewards and participation trophies. Now, first of all, I do want to claim the trophy. Um, I got quite lucky on this because I just about scraped rune tier, which is the second highest, by 200 points. 200 or 300, I think. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get all the trophies. I don't think I'm going to keep all of these in my bank or even the rune trophy. I don't know if you can bank it in your POH or anything. Uh, but yeah, you get a nice little trophy. Quite a decent cosmetic, if I do say so myself. Um, and now, more importantly, there's also a shop where you can get your cosmetics for your participation. So as you can see here, I've got 11,000 points in total. you got the teleport scroll, twisted horns to add to the slayer, uh... Slayer Helm and some other stuff such as the POH recolor. So right now I can probably pick up the Twisted Horns which I wanted to all along. Um, so let's go ahead and get that first of all. Confirm the Twisted Horns. Very nice. Now we got remaining 5k points but I'm gonna add Mod Flippy on Jagex uh, Twitter because I want to find out if the reward total does spill over into the next league because there might be some cooler rewards. All I cared about from this one was the Twisted Horns. All of this other stuff I don't really care about as much. If it comes down to it and the points get reset, I'm going to pick up a twist teleport scroll and maybe a set of blueprints. But um, for now, we have got ourselves a nice cosmetic upgrade to our Slayer Helm, which has been pretty plain all along. We haven't gotten any of the heads from Slayer so far. So let's, uh, let's add these into a Slayer Helm. I'm not sure if 
Oh, okay, okay. I see what you are driving at, Jagex. You need to unlock it first for a thousand points. So let's go visit Steve and get that unlocked very quick. There we are. We've arrived at the Slayer Master. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rewards. I'm guessing this is going to be another thousand to unlock this uh, Slayer Helm. Twisted Vision. Nice. Learn how to combine the twisted horns of your Slayer Helm. Deem it like the Great Orm for a thousand points. Now, out of all of the helmets, the base game, I reckon the King Black Bonnet is still a tiny bit better. Um, but the Twisted Vision is going to be freaking sick. So pay a thousand points. We're down to 2227, uh, which is still quite a bit for the Hydra Skips. Now, we've learned that ability. Let's go ahead and combine the horns with the Slayer Helm. Yes, let's do it. Ooh, that is clean. I'm liking the look of this. I actually take it back, you know. It goes quite nice with my uh, gear setup. I'm very glad to have unlocked that. That looks freaking clean, dude. I'm going to be looking like an absolute beast for the rest of eternity, dude. Yes, dude. The second onside has been claimed. 90 kill count. We are so lucky. Both onsides on the drop rate. Let's go get a bludgeon piece. On the last onside, I got insanely lucky, and I think I got the least probable drop, which was the pet, so I cannot complain. Regardless of what happens, even if I get an Abyssal Dagger, that's still an upgrade for things like Vassa or Blue Dragons. So let's just see what we get. Can we get a bludgeon piece within the first 90 kills of the Sire? Please, game. Yes, yes, dude, we got the bludgeon claw. Woohoo! One of three pieces has been obtained. We are a step closer to obtaining our best in slot crush weapon for now. Uh, until the Zami Hasta, this is so good, dude. Two pieces left to get. Let's continue. We still have 85 Abyssal Demons left to kill, or Abyssal Sires, I should say. We've just had insane luck overall on this account. Let's continue and see if we can get any more unsires before the task ends. There it is 100 kills of the Abyssal Sire. I'll tell you guys, honestly, this boss is quite fun, at least so far, I haven't gotten too far into the kill count, I'm quite happy with the drops we've received so far, man, two unsides, two really sick drops as well from them, let's keep going here, we got 75 left to go, also that puts us within the top 20 for hardcores for this boss, I guess not many people care about the Abyssal Bludgeon. Uh, either that or they've died. Now that Twisted Leagues is over, we should be having some more regular raids happening, now that the people have come back to the main game mode, so maybe if we're very lucky, we might see a purple sometime soon. Let's hope so. Good luck, boys. What are we going to get? Ah, oh, nothing this time. We did get the elite clue scroll from that raid. Nice. 112 kill count coming in and some more Lizardman fangs. I think I've used like 200 of my Xerix charges, so I'll take it. Let's see if we can uh, do that elite as well. There is the completed elite casket from raids. Let's see if we can snatch some goodies this time around. Master Clue, some planks, let's see if it's attemptable, this might yet turn into something good, uh, nope, can't do it. As of now, I've decided to finish off the rest of these 54 demons down here in the catacombs, um, only because I'm extremely tired today, I don't want to make any mistakes, and especially because Sire is like such a punishing place, um, that being said, from the first two onsides, the loot was insane. Um, speaking of which, just over 6.4 mil earned, very nice, some Really solid resources here, you can see like runite ore, some cannonballs, uh, lots of runes as well which is quite good because you use up a fair few doing some barrages over there. But yeah, back to medium clue scroll content and regular slayer for now. Back to completing just a few more medium clues, I believe this will be the casket number 17. I'm going to aim to do 20 and then I think I'll end off the video purely because there's been a lot going on IRL so I don't think I can make it to 95 slayer quite as soon as I can. Oh, uh, as, as I wanted to, sorry. Anyway, let's open up the casket. Wow, that is quite depressing. Not seen a unique in quite some time. There it is, my friends, the final medium casket of the episode, as well as a hard from a Blood Veil task. So let's open them back to front. I'm going to leave the exciting one for the last step. Ooh, golden kite shield. I'm already happy. Can we get anything nice from this uh, medium casket? The answer is we cannot, but it was a refreshing change from the standard Puro Puro, but I think we're about ready to go back there next episode. Well, that about does it for episode 47 of the Hardcore Iron Man Progress. I do hope you guys have enjoyed the comeback. It's certainly been an astounding episode in terms of luck once again. Uh, going to Abyssal Sire and getting the pet as the first on side on 30 kill count, that was just insane. I later looked up on the wiki that it's a 1 in 25 from an on side to get this thing, so I'm very, very happy to get that. Uh, as well as that, of course, getting ourselves the Bludgeon Claw, so 1 out of 3 for a really strong crush weapon going ahead. 
Got ourselves a new Slayer Helm from the Twisted League, which was quite a nice cosmetic upgrade. We're finally not rolling around with the pleb normal status. As well as that, we got ourselves the Chompy pet at the start of the episode, which is quite a nice addition. So six pets overall to this episode, which was quite nice to see. Um, as well as that, some skilling upgrades in the form of the Gricola's can and the Pearl Fishing Rod. So quite nice there. Some quality of life upgrades for fishing and farming. So uh, I really hope you guys have enjoyed on the medium side of things for the clue scrolls we got ourselves the final non-ranger pair of boots so the collection log is full apart from the ranger boots which uh, i hope i'll get in the next few episodes i'll be returning to puro most likely finishing off 95 hunter in the episodes to come um 95 slayer sorry uh in the episodes to come and i hope you guys have enjoyed the progress i'll catch you guys next time peace